All right, might as well just put this light on. I'm gonna wait a little bit for everyone else to get online. I actually have my dog with me, but she is, she's relaxing a little bit too much. Sir, you wanna say hi? So to say hi yeah she didn't want to go before i make this video uh might as well introduce it so this is my somewhat of a mix lab yeah she's she's really attached um she likes being around she watches me sometimes when i do my videos so yeah should probably wait a little bit longer or do you think we should start now all right, you, you can lay down and get back to my preaching. All right, hold on. Let me uh, let me just get ready. So this video, after praying today and after uh, praying on, and thinking, like really asking God, what is He trying to show me with um, what to show you guys and what to show me? Because I can't understand this stuff until I learn it myself. So what he was showing me today, he led me to Matthew 24 and 25, but the main focus was on Matthew 25. Now, Matthew 24, Jesus is telling his disciples how the last days would be, how the end of days would come and how, what would happen in desolation and what would happen in all like the, the seven, last seven years of tribulation until Jesus comes back. But when you go to Matthew 25, Jesus gives parables of the wedding and the groomsmen and of uh, casting and of giving treasures or we they call it um, they call it talents which is a way of a biblical way of saying gold that they restored in heaven or they, they stored in earth but what really really spoke to me was Matthew chapter 25 verses 31 all the way to 46 and on those specific verses and the last half of that chapter Jesus is telling his disciples somewhat of a story of how things would come when he comes back and uh, in a way yeah he's talking about the people but i want to describe it to you in a story that i think it's better to describe it in a story of a goat and a sheep so this is a story I, I want to give you there was once there was once a goat a goat and a sheep now they both go out into a field as they go out into a field, they find they find a pen, a, a great big pen, uh, a great big pen that has many sheep around it. And in this pen, there is many, there is so much grass. There is a shepherd that guides this pen of sheep, right? And as the goat and the sheep, they both go along. They were both lost outside of the field, outside of this pen. And as they go inside, they taste the goodness of this they taste the goodness of what the shepherd has provided for this for these other sheep that were his sheep but two things as they come out the goat he tastes the goodness of what that shepherd provided and as the sheep comes out he tastes the goodness of what that shepherd provided as well but they go their separate ways now as the sheep he takes that goodness he remembers it and instead of just ignoring it he embraces it and he goes and finds other lost sheep and brings it back to this pen he brings the other lost sheep out in the fields out um, eating nothing but eating nothing but stuff that is either spoiled or decomposed he brings the other sheep he comes back and he he cares for the other sheep and he brings them to the shepherd now, on the other hand, the goat, the goat goes to the field and he knows, he understands what the shepherd has provided for all these sheep freely, but yet he only enjoys the taste of it and all he wants is a taste for himself, but yet he shares nothing with the other sheep 
or other goats to become sheep. So he remains a goat. Now, in Matthew chapter 25, verse 31, all the way to 46, Jesus gives a storyline to, and not this specific storyline, but he gives something similar to goats and sheep. He says that the Son of Man his, in his glory will come. When he comes in his own glory, he will sit upon a throne of his own glory as the last days are over when Jesus comes back. And Jesus says to his disciples, it'll be like it'll be like dividing the goats from the sheep. All nations would be divided. And he, as he divides all the nations around the world, he will, he will divide the goats from the sheep. The goats will be on the left hand and the sheep will be on the right hand. Now, why would the sheep be on the right hand? It actually goes perfectly along with what the entire Bible says, as in Psalms and even in Chronicles, they all say that even David, King David also said in Psalms that God's right hand is powerful. Uh, the prophet Isaiah in the book of Isaiah says that God's right hand is powerful. Now, I, I always like to tell people this when they always refer to God, his, why is it his right hand? Well, in Colossians, it says that Jesus is that the fullness of God is in Jesus. Now, we all know Jesus is God is Christ. Where am I going with this? Well, pay attention a little bit. I like to think of this as boxing. You know, when you, you're boxing, you're boxing, and you, uh, you throw a little jab here and there, here and there. But usually boxers, their strongest hand is their right hand. Then out of nowhere, you got your knockout hit. So the same thing with God as he comes with this fullness in Christ all the right hand all glory and even jesus says this at the end of matthew 28 towards the end he says that all authority everything and power has been given to him to him in his name it's all in his name when he has that knockout but that's one reason to understand why the sheep are on his right hand and if it's given to him then he's given it to all of us but at the same time it's not just power and that authority. He's given us a responsibility as we live in Christ. So when the sheep are divided and they're on the right hand, but the goats are on the left hand, he has it for a reason. So after chapter 25 of Matthew, verse 31 and so on, Jesus says the king tells him, come forward, bless the, my, my servants, bless of my father, bless of the father. Why does he say that? He says that because the sheep that actually followed him. And notice after those following verses, he says, When I was hungry, you gave me meat. When I was thirsty, you gave me water to drink. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was sick or in prison, you came and visited me. And then he says that he laid down the foundation of, from the foundation of the world that, like to enter into heaven. He tells that to the sheep and the sheep asked him, how, when did we ever clothe you? When did we ever give you food? When did we ever visit you when you were in prison or sick? When did we ever give you uh, a drink when you were thirsty? And he says, whatever you have done to the least of my brethren, you've done to me. So whatever you've done to all these people on the earth, you've done to me, meaning Whatever we do to certain people, whatever we do, not to just our brothers or people in the church, but whatever we do to people outside of the church, people in the world, we do it to God because we represent Christ. And if we represent Christ, then that means we're doing whatever act we do upon a person. We don't want to forgive that person. Then we're not going to forgive. Then we're not going to, we're having some bitterness in our heart towards a person. But if we're acting with kindness towards one another, if we're feeding someone, if we're taking care of the homeless, the poor, or anyone else, it's like we're doing the same to God because God's everywhere watching everything. And notice that as he tells the sheep to enter in, he tells the goats, he tells the goats that, he tells the goats to get away from him. He doesn't know them, to depart from him. Why does he say that? Because the goats, he didn't, he didn't, the goats never clothed him when he was naked. The goats never fed him when he was hungry. They never gave him something to drink when he was thirsty. They never visited him in prison when he was sick or in the prisons of this world. And why does he say that? Because the goats 
became selfish. They became selfish even though they tasted the goodness of God in that field, in that pen. He, he even shows them, I know what you did. You can't escape, you can't escape the judgment. It is coming, so that shows, we, after tasting that goodness, are we just gonna have it for ourselves? Are we gonna share it? Are we gonna share that goodness? And it's not just sharing that goodness. How do you share it? Is it just by talking? No. Ministering, you have to go minister to someone. Everything you do ministers to a person. If you call yourself a Christian, you're gonna go minister to a person with your life. Your life can minister. The way you live can minister. Now, if you're living in a certain sin, yeah, that's where we gotta pray for one another. But if you're willfully, willfully, like actually you know what you're doing and you just don't care, you have the goodness of God, but yet you don't wanna live out with the goodness of God to share with other believers. It is a very selfish thing. You become, you become uh, so selfish with this goat mentality. And the storyline of this shows that we all can act act a certain way we all believe we're sheep but we can live like goats sometimes we can live treating other people just just an ugly horrible way and jesus is saying as we've treated the least of his other brethren because he's not just known as our god he, jesus is also known as a brother to us as he relates to us as he suffered for us as he cried for us so the way we treat someone else if we have that bitterness if you still have that hate towards someone forgive them because Jesus says the way you treat them it's like you're treating him one of the greatest commandments is to love our, our brothers our neighbors each other even if they hate us go make amends to them go forgive them go live on for Christ because if you're representing Christ you're gonna represent him you're not gonna represent a false Christ that doesn't forgive you're not gonna represent a false Christ that that doesn't care about the salvation of others you're not going to represent a false Christ that respects other religions that will lead someone to hell. And I mean that to, and I mean that with all love because we have this whole mentality that do whatever makes you happy. We want to we want to just please everyone else sometimes. Sometimes we we just love we love just fulfilling our own needs. We don't we we're lazy sometimes. And God has to remind us this life ain't going to be comfortable. But the next life, you don't only live once, you live twice. The next life is going to be very comfortable if you would just submit to the will of God. If you would just give up all your sins, drinking, smoking, homosexuality, all that. And if you would just ask him for more authority. Not authority for you to have over others, but authority over you. When you get to the point of asking God for more authority, meaning, God, Father, give me more authority, reign over me more, continue to have more authority over me, then you start to notice God gives you certain things to do. Now, I want to be very clear. You're not saved by, you're not saved by works. You're saved by grace. But that does not excuse you from, from working for the kingdom of God if you understand what that means. But if you're barely getting on, go back and replay the video and understand we're not meant to be goats, we're meant to be sheep. Goats don't have a shepherd. And even if they blend in with the sheep, the goats, the goats tend to stray away in the spiritual side of this. They tend to stray away and it's our job to to just remain as sheep, to follow the ways of our shepherd. And after we've tasted that goodness, bring others to the open field, bring others to the pen where the shepherd cares for his sheep. Because the shepherd is Jesus. And the only way to, to God is through Christ. And Christ, Christ, of course, is our ultimate savior, our God over every God. Any other religion ain't gonna save you. So let's just keep it like that. God bless you guys.